happens when you botch the finish to your own match? What do you do when the ring ropes break? Find out next until we make it. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I've been very fortunate because I've worked in front of the cameras as a professional wrestler, referee, ring announcer, and commentator. But I've also worked behind the scenes in wrestling as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant. And a couple other things, too. I feel like the introduction is padded out sufficiently. I bring the sum of all these experiences, and I serve it up right here to you week after week on Till We Make It. And if you're down with that, what are you waiting for? Go ahead. Join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below. Or if you want to take your participation, your education to the next level, come join our community over on Patreon. Over there, you will find, this is the actual count as of this morning, 482 exclusive posts, including more than 100 videos that you can unlock starting for as little as $5 a month. If you got a credit card or you got a PayPal account, you can be part of it right now. Follow the link down below in the descriptus and join us over on Patreon. Today, I'm going to load you up. I've got 13 hacks in all that I want you to store away. Keep them in your utility belt so that when disaster strikes, you will be ready. Let's go. Let's not bury the lead. Up first, what do you do when the finish to your match gets botched? The truth is there are two answers to this one. So if you're working somewhere where the referee has an earpiece and is getting constant feedback from the people at Gorilla or the people in the production truck, after you botch whatever the finish is, just sell and wait for instructions from backstage because they might tell you to just get up and run the finish a second time because they know they can fix it in post-production. If you're in that exact scenario, remember to orient the spot wherever it had been in the ring. For example, if the finish was a superplex off the northeast turnbuckle, make sure that when you repeat it, you climb the northeast turnbuckle and do it there. Don't change the positioning in the ring or it won't line up in post-production. If you're working somewhere where the referee is not getting instructions from Gorilla or from the backstage area, my advice to you is do not repeat the spot. Find something else that achieves the goal that was given to you by the booker. So if the goal was the heel goes over by disqualification, you find another way to get to it. If the finish is meant to be the baby face goes over with a flash pin, find a different way to do it. But don't repeat the thing you just botched. What do you do when your entrance music doesn't play? Unless you can see what's happening at music, follow my 5 Dave Batista rule. You're going to count to 5. 1 Dave Batista, 2 Dave Batista, 3 Dave Batista. And if you make it to 5 and that music's not playing, you're going to walk through the curtain and act like this is how it's supposed to be, no matter what. Are you learning something from today's video? Won't you go ahead and leave a like a palooza down below? It really does help the channel to grow. And thanks for doing that. Okay, up third, what do you do when you are sent to the ring in front of a live audience to cut a promo that is only to fill time? If the crowd's already in and you're just filling time because somebody's flight was delayed or the next match isn't ready to go on just yet, rely on this old trick. If you are a face, you're going to talk about everybody on the heel side of the equation. Vice versa. If you're a heel, you're going to talk about every single baby face on the roster and start from the bottom of the card and work your way all the way up to the champion. Take a moment to call out what each character's value is. Here's somebody I would love to face because they have amazing acrobatic skill. And then put yourself over. But I know I could beat them because nobody ever escapes my clever submission finishing move or whatever. Take the time to mention everybody and then put yourself over after you name their value. This accomplishes 
a number of things, especially if you put the champion last. It makes your ultimate goal clear to the audience. I'm chasing that championship belt. It also helps get over anybody lower on the card than you are by you bringing them up in the conversation, making the audience realize these matchups are potential. It excites intrigue. And if you happen to be the champion of the company in this position, just consider them all challengers. And when putting yourself over, talk about why you'll beat them all and why you're going to retire with that belt. What do you do when the ropes break in the middle of your match? If a turnbuckle gets stripped, the come along breaks, the cross cables become detached, and the ropes lose all their tension, immediately cut all rope and all corner spots out of the rest of your match. And if the finish that you are working toward necessitates their use, like for example, you were expecting to go home on a shooting star press from the top turnbuckle, check in with your opponent. Hey, can you run the shooting star press from a standing position? If that's not possible, you're going to need to choose a new finish. Consider the ropes and the corners to be out of play. What do you do when your opponent gets hurt while you are performing in the ring and it is clear what that injury is? You are going to choose a finish from a different zone of the body. So if your opponent has just broken their ankle and it's plain as day, put the jujigatame on their arm and let them tap out from an arm submission. But go home directly on a part of the body that's far removed from where that injury just happened. Important follow-up. What do you do when your opponent is injured while you are performing in the ring, but you cannot tell what the injury is? If you don't know what the injury is, do not touch your opponent. If your opponent happens to be outside the ring when this occurs, tell the ref to count them out as fast as possible and signal for help from the back. If the injury happens in the ring, instruct the referee to throw up the X. You're going to hit the floor and take the count out lost. Go right to the back and let everybody know that there's an injury in the ring, but it's not clear what that injury is. What do you do when you miss your flight to your booking? Go directly to the service desk for the airline you were booked on and explain the situation and then get out your credit card. If you miss the flight, it's on you. So get ready to pay, in a best case scenario, a change fee to that flight. In a worst case scenario, you're buying yourself a ticket on the next departing flight, so you still make your booking. What do you do when your match goes home way too early? And I don't mean like 30 or 60 seconds early. I mean like 12 or 15 minutes too early. What about that one? What do you do? This exact thing has happened to me a couple times throughout the years. Most recently, when I was wrestling up in Winnipeg just a few years ago, the match went home way too early, maybe 10 minutes left on the clock. So if this ever happens to you, here's what you're going to do. You're going to get on the microphone and explain that something wasn't exactly right. My shoulder was up before the three count. This wasn't quite fair. Whatever makes sense for your character. And then challenge your opponent to make it a best two out of three falls match. If it's against a baby face, well, the baby face should want competition, their game to go, yeah, let's do it. If it's a heel, the heel is so confident because they have already won one of the falls, they know they could keep on beating you all night long, they're gonna accept. Either way, use the balance of the time to make up those two falls. Just be certain that the finish is what it's meant to be. If this character is supposed to go over with their submission hold at the end, Find a way to get to that at the end of the third fall, no matter what, and problem solved. Have any of these ever happened to you, by the way? Let me know down below in the comments. Tell me the story. I want to know. Okay, what do you do when the canvas rips while you are wrestling? You're going to go home as quickly as possible. Do not chance someone's foot getting snagged in that rip on the canvas and a serious injury occurring. Injury aside, some tears in a canvas can be stitched or patched if you get to them before they get too bad. But once that rip goes all the way across the canvas, somebody's out 400 bucks. What do you do when focus is being pulled away from the ring? Because 
There's a production snafu happening over at the entranceway. There's a fight in the stands, etc. What do you do? If you sense focus has been pulled away from the ring, grab a hold and sit still until you know that the attention has come back. And if you can't see exactly what's going on, ask the ref to be your eyes in that scenario. And then just hang tight until everyone's focus is back on you. Number 11. What do you do when your gear is lost and you have to wrestle in your street clothes? There's no way you're going to hide this from the audience. So you've only got two options in my experience. Number one, you're going to get the match changed in advance to a street fight. And your opponent, they're going to wrestle in their street clothes too. If that's not an option, you're going to go on earlier than scheduled. Just make sure that all the right people have signed off on that before you do it. Send your opponent out to the ring first. They're going to start cutting this incendiary promo, and you're going to come out in your street clothes to answer them, and it's going to seg directly into the match to justify you not being in your gear. What do you do when you get that urgent call about an international booking, and then you discover your passport is expired? It kind of depends. If the tour departs in less than five days, you're going to have to tell them. Your passport has expired. You can't take advantage of this opportunity. But if you've got at least five business days before you'd have to get on the plane, you're going to look up a passport expediter near you, pay whatever the fee is, and make sure it's taken care of so that you don't miss out on that overseas tour. Okay, try this one on for size. What do you do if a contact lens, piece of gum, a blade, your muffler falls out onto the mat while you're wrestling. What do you do? You are going to put this loose object between you and the referee and then clamp a hold on your opponent down on the mat. When the referee comes down to check for a submission, smarten them up as to what happens to be loose and let them know to very discreetly scoop it right up off the mat before everything comes back up and the match resumes. What did you think of all my hacks? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Does your experience tell you something different? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you need even more tools, I'll give you my whole toolbox. Toolbox Building Better Pro Wrestling is available right now on Amazon as a digital book or a print book, or you can get it over on audible.com as an audiobook. And take a look at this giant roll call of all my awesome patrons. If you want to be one of them, follow the link. It's appearing on screen right now, or of course it's always down below for you in the descriptors. And here's a video you might enjoy as well.